I thought we'd sorted this out years ago. LED lamps flickering, flashing, buzzing away like a cheap disco in a dodgy pub. But apparently not. Because our inbox is still overflowing with people who can't dim their lights without them having some kind of electrical meltdown. So what's going on? Bad lamps, bad dimmers, bad luck. Well, there are a few old enemies at work here and some new ones too. Because now even your solar inverter could be joining the flicker fest. So in this video, we're going to find out why your lights are still dancing when they shouldn't and what you can actually do about it. When it comes to lighting most of the old favourites, halogen, incandescent, fluorescent, have been banned or phased out in most parts of the world. So when it comes to dimming, LEDs are now the only show in town. And they've been around long enough that you'd think everyone would have figured out how to make them dim smoothly by now. Apparently not. Because in just the last week I've had two messages from viewers still struggling with LED dimming. So time for a revisit on what's really going on and why it's still such a pain. The most common problems show up in new installations. In commercial settings such as offices you might find modern dimming protocols like DALI in use and we've got separate videos covering that. But in homes, restaurants and more smaller projects you'll usually find what's known as phase dimming where the mains voltage is chopped to reduce the power reaching the lamp. It's simple, it's common and it's where most of the problems start. And the fix in most cases is dead simple. Make sure every part of the system is actually designed for dimming. That means the lamps, the fittings, the power supplies and the LED drivers for things like LED strip lighting or garden lights. Most dimmer switches sold today claim to be LED compatible but as we'll see later some, like this range from Enkin, include features that can literally take your installs to another level. The data sheet for a lamp will usually show whether it's dimmable, often marked with a simple symbol, which you'll also find on the side of the lamp. If you put a non-dimmable lamp on a dimming circuit, the best case scenario is nothing happens. The worst case, you fry the dimmer, but most likely the lamp flickers and the dimmer starts to buzz like an angry wasp. And here's where it gets sneaky. In existing installations, one LED fails and so someone replaces it with a non-dimmable one by mistake that single lamp can then cause chaos. Not just for itself, but for every other lamp on the circuit. Similarly, if you're swapping out old lamp technology, like halogen and moving over to LEDs, you might fit proper dimmable lamps and still find they just don't dim properly. That's usually because the old dimmer isn't designed to work with LED loads. It's expecting a chunky halogen, not a low power electronic circuit. In that case, the solution's simple. You need to swap out the dimmer. Then there's the awkward middle ground, the land of so-called compatibility. The LED lamp says it's dimmable. The dimmer says it can handle LED loads. But together, they argue like an old married couple. You get flicker at dimmed levels or they just refuse to go down to a nice low glow. Dimmer manufacturers often build in circuitry to deal with poor quality lamps. Lamp manufacturers, meanwhile, add their own circuitry to cope with old style dimmers. And when you mix the two, those systems can end up fighting each other. Now, most dimmer brands publish compatibility charts showing which lamps they've tested and some lamp makers return the favour with lists of dimmers they recommend. But here's the catch. Lamp and control gear designs change all the time. So something that worked perfectly last year can suddenly start misbehaving after a quiet redesign inside the lamp. The key here is flexibility. Choose a dimming system that can adapt, not just one that works today, but one that's ready for whatever tomorrow's LEDs throw at it. Let's take a look at this Enkin dimmer. It's simple to operate and I push the button to turn it on or off and twist to dim up and down. And exactly what you'd expect from a rotary dimmer. But on the back, things get clever. There's a small setup button that serves multiple functions, yet it's really easy to use. Here's how it works. First, use the dimmer knob to set the light to the lowest level you want, just before the lamps go out. Then press the setup button on the back three times within two seconds. That stores the low end dimming point as the lamps will gently pulse to confirm the setting has been saved. In most installations, you'll want this set as low as possible before the light cuts out completely. If you've got high quality lamps, you'll see smooth, stable dimming all the way down. But if the lamps start to flicker or become unstable at the bottom end, raise the level slightly and store it again. Pro tip, after you've stored the low end setting, test it by switching the lamps off and on again while still at that low level. In some cases, you'll find a bit of hysteresis where the point at which the lamp turns on is slightly higher than the point it turns off. If that happens, just nudge the low end setting up a touch and store it again. 
Another tip, if your circuit mixes different types of lamps, say filament lamps and GU10, you may notice each type has a different low end dimming point. That's not something the dimmer can fix. You'll either need to set the low end based on the worst performing lamp or better still split them onto separate circuits. One for down lights, another for wall lights. That way you can fine tune each circuit for perfect performance. We can demonstrate the problems of low end and mixed type of lighting load with this demo rig. Here we've got some down lights, we've got some LED strip start to dim the system down we'll notice that the led strip goes out first and at that point the actual led downlights are still pretty bright so if we were to set our low end to match the led downlights to the same point where the strip goes out the room would still be pretty bright at that point so that's why it's worth splitting out different loads onto different dimming circuits and again we see the same in repeat bring the led downlights on they come on first and the strip comes on later the led downlights are already pretty bright by the time that happens it's also possible on the Enkin dimmer to set the high end light level so why would you want to do that well there are a few good reasons firstly it's an easy way to save energy by making sure the lights can't be turned up unnecessarily necessarily bright. You might also want to limit the maximum brightness to preserve a certain ambience, especially in settings like restaurants or living rooms where too much light can kill the mood. It's also useful when you're replacing older LED lamps with newer, more efficient ones. LED technology has come a long way in the last five to ten years, so a lamp that used to draw 10 watts might now produce the same brightness using only five. Or if you install a new 10 watt lamp today, you might suddenly find you've got way more light than you bargained for. So whether it's for energy saving or for controlling maximum brightness, being able to set the high end limit is a very handy feature. To do it, simply set the light to your preferred top brightness level, then press the setup button on the back five times within three seconds. The lamps will pulse to confirm the high end setting has been stored. Wattage brings up another key specification, minimum load. For a dimmer to work properly, it needs to see a certain amount of load on the circuit. Back in the days of incandescent lamps, that minimum load might have been around 40 watts, which was no problem when each lamp drew 60 or more. But in LED terms, 40 watts is massive. Most modern LED lamps and fittings are only a few watts each. So if you've only got one or two on a circuit, you could be well below what the dimmer needs to operate correctly. That's where modern LED compatible dimmers make all the difference. The Enkin dimmer, for example, can work with loads as low as two watts, making it compatible with even the most efficient LED lamps. If you don't meet the minimum load, the dimmer may start to misbehave, you'll see flicker, instability, or the lights might not dim properly at all. Of course, dimmers also have a maximum load, and that can vary depending on whether you're using traditional lamps or LEDs. Maximum loads for LED circuits are usually lower because the electronics inside the dimmer are doing a lot more work to control those small, fast switching loads. This Enkin dimmer, for example, is rated up to 150 watts of LED load, plenty for most installations. But there's another thing to watch out for. If you've got multiple dimmers fitted in the same enclosure or switch plate, they'll all generate heat and that heat adds up. So in those situations, you may need to derate each dimmer slightly to make sure they stay within their safe operating limits. Of course, if you do make a mistake, these dimmers are fitted with a self-resetting thermal fuse and built-in short circuit protection, ideal for those moments when the homeowner has had a go at fixing a two-way lighting circuit themselves. One last parameter to be aware of is the dimming mode of operation. Most modern LED lamps are best suited to trailing edge dimming. That's where the dimmer controls the falling edge of the AC waveform. It's smoother, quieter, and generally far better for LED drivers. This Enkin dimmer is set to trailing edge mode by default. But if you need to match older equipment that requires leading edge dimming, and that will usually be stated in the product instructions, you can switch the operating mode easily. Just press the setup button on the back nine times within five seconds. The lamps will pulse to confirm the mode has changed. It's interesting to note, lots of fittings will say they'll work on both leading and trailing edge. But what we found, and you can hear it on these LED fixtures here, is that actually noisier when they're a leading edge dimmer. So although you might have the option, actually setting to trailing edge could result in a quieter installation. Great for library. 
case. I'll leave a link in the description to the full range of Enkin dimmers, including this one, which lets you control the lighting from multiple switch locations within a room. There's also a matching module that looks just like a dimmer, but functions as a regular on-off switch. So you can keep a consistent look across the whole faceplate. I hope I've covered most of the common problems related to LED dimmers. If you've got any additional questions, pop them in the comments. I do read them. And we had an inquiry this week from a viewer who's having problems with their solar system that is off-grid but causes flicker in their LED lighting when the battery's fully charged. I haven't had a chance to fully investigate that one, but if you've experienced it, please drop it in the comments. And if you're wondering why some LED lamps that used to be rated A are now labelled G under the new efficiency rules, I explored that with Gary in the video that's on screen now.